Uh, Islam Shamonian he said he want peace yeah I want peace I agree with Sam Shamon I want peace but before we have peace we need to have a piece of Hamas and make it barbecue because this is justice the Bible says the one who live by the sword shall die by the sword and Hamas killed a lot of innocent people and it's time to have peace how we can have peace we bring the criminal into justice so in less than maybe 48 hours Islam is piece of shit you will see how we will get peace together with Hamas don't you want peace a Muslim talking about peace a Muslim who has just raped children and babies and they dance in the street for raping them talking about peace <laughs> A Muslim and he called himself Islam is peace <laughs> yeah Islam is peace of shit I agree with you I'm not particularly right my friend even Zakir Naik agree with me hey Zakir what do you want to say to him is Islam is peace what do you think Christian Prince first of all I don't like the next you put for me in the screen Zakir Naik I did not even put it how you know you're so fast man because I didn't make you Hmm? Okay, what's wrong with this picture? First of all, why are you making those things going around my head? Because you are a holy man, isn't it? Prophet Muhammad he used to get dizzy when he received a revelation. Exactly. So, aren't you dizzy right now? Christian Prince, first of all, I am not dizzy because I'm not the Prophet. So are you saying to me that your Prophet, his real name is Mr. Dizzy? Christian Prince, respect yourself. Okay, we can change it. What about not dizzy? Disneyland. Because all his story is coming from Disneyland. Can you explain to me how the Mickey Mouse became the enemy of Allah and we should kill it? Christian Prince. First of all, Mickey Mouse is a very, 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 very evil creature. Abdul, what's wrong with you? It's a Mickey Mouse. It's a cartoon. It's not even a real thing. How you want to kill a cartoon? Very easy. How you can do that? We burn it. <laughs> Islam is peace, huh? <laughs> Well, just wait when they get Hamas one after one, Christian Prince, he will go party. I don't drink. I am not in a favor to drink, but I will drink if this has happened. I promise, actually. You know, once I, I bought a box of uh, beer, I don't know, I think it's expired. Still, I did not finish it. <laughs> and the most funny thing is when I bought the beer, the lady, she asked me, are you under the, uh, are you over the age of 21? Can I see your ID? <laughs> There's an old woman behind me. She started laughing. <laughs> She's serious. I don't believe I said, do I look like 21? What's wrong? Do, do I look like 18 or 19? <laughs> you know, welcome to America. We have a lot of smart people. Like, are you over 21? Can I see your ID, please? What? what the heck I went home I don't have a mirror I want to look what happened to me like she's asking me if I am over 21 years old that's a true story this is why Zachary Naik get dizzy <laughs> she must be watching Zachary Naik a lot oh boy uh, yeah so it's time for party if we if 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 they are able really uh, the only thing is worrying me about uh, uh, this uh, thing that Hamas will be able to escape using their tunnels under the ground I hope that uh, the Israeli they were able to extract A lot of information actually what I heard that a lot of target been hit by the Israeli army it was information given from Hamas members who've been arrested last week the terrorist so those terrorists they deliver extremely important information to the Israeli army and as I know that the Israeli army already they controlled some of those tunnels. It, 
if they have a full map of it and they were able to catch such a map that will make the job a lot easier because simply they make a city under the city because they are rats so let us see what will happen and if Hamas decide to hide down there there is a very easy way actually to finish them all they can with water they can pump water there I mean there is many ways you know tunnels are very easy to flood just know where the entrance is and then water will go everywhere just flood it with water you don't even need to send your soldiers there so it might be an area where you can hide but in fact it's the same time it's a death trap very easy to be killed inside what do you think guys should i join the, the, the israeli army to take a command in the mission i'm a very good in war by the way i've been in war for many years uh, i've been in the army i'm very well trained and i can make a very good planner for because i know how they think i speak their language i know their religion and i know how they think so i can do a really great job to get them busted Uh, <laughs> yeah, but the Israeli will not trust me because I'm an Arab at the end of the day, you know. If I go right now to Israel, I was thinking actually to go to Israel, but there is a there is a problem right now. They don't trust anyone, especially you are, a, you are a, an Arab. They might even not let me get in. I don't blame them, you know. I will not blame them. They don't know who you are. Oh, but they know that this guy's an Arab. Right. The real war I'm doing already. Yeah, yeah, it's true. This is more actually this is more scary for the Muhammad himself. Uh let's see. All right. But won't the hostages be in the tunnel? My friend in war time. The whole idea of going there now, you are sacrificing your own children. So hostages are no different. Aren't you sent your kids to fight and they will get killed in war? So when somebody says, what about the hostages? Hostages is very important to free them, but you have to assume that they are dead already. Remember, they are terrorists. They have no rules. Same time, the mission is more important than a hundred hostages because if you don't do it now, tomorrow they will kill another thousand and they will kidnap another one hundred. So a wise leader, he will be happy even if his son, one of the hostages, to let him go in order to save a nation. Which one you favor? To save a nation or to save a hundred hostages? I know they are children, they are innocent, they don't deserve it, but it's war. If you go in war and you are a person who like you've soft, this is you cannot be you cannot be a war leader. You cannot bring victory to your to your to your country. In war you have to be tough, you will bleed, your children will die. War is not going to a restaurant to drink coffee. So either you choose with sacrifice, like how, how many how many uh, uh, Israeli soldiers now will die when, when they go there? Many. We more than the hundred hostages. Don't those soldiers have families too and they have kids? So why are you are going there? You are going there because you have to do the sacrifice. It's not a choice. If you negotiate with the terrorist and you say, okay, give me the hostages, I will leave. Then they will do it tomorrow. They get away with all the crimes they did. Never negotiate with terrorist because he will come second day. Just to give you an example. If a group of people, they kidnap your son. 
And they said to you, we want a million dollar. Give us the money. You give them the million dollar. Let us say they keep their promise. They release your son. A few days after, another group kidnap your son. Give us a million dollar. A year after, you just told all the criminals in the town, you kidnap my son, you take my money. Until one day, one of those group, they take the money and kill your son because they want to hide evidence. So when you negotiate with terrorists and you pay them, because this is a payment, by the way, you're paying them. Hamas now, they consider themselves like heroes. Muslims are praising them. So if you don't show them the consequence of doing such an act, they will do it every day. Like the stupid Biden, he decided to give Iran $6 billion in, in exchange of American prisoners. Why you want to do that? Because simply they are stupid. Iranian now, anytime, they kidnap some American and they ask for ransom. Very simple. Anytime they want to force any European country, they just take any citizen of your country and negotiate. Even if the citizen did nothing, they can accuse him of anything. Any anything you can imagine. Very simple. So if you agree with them and you give them what they want, they will kidnap more and they will never stop. So it's very stupid from someone like Biden and those liberals to do what they are doing. They should not give a, a penny to a terrorist. And then Iran will stop doing that because they notice, okay, if we take American citizens, those guys, they don't care. Okay, have him. But because we have people in politician, and politician is about what? It's about winning election, making yourself look good. They don't care really for fighting and being victorious against the enemy or the one who caused dangerous act to the country. They care only how they can be elected again. All those who work in politics, they don't say the truth for they do politics. And politics is always about, let us lie to each other. Everything in politics is about, let us lie to each other. Um, and you will notice that all Western countries, they defend Islam, they support Islam, they give money to Islam, and now all of those European stupid liberals, they are horribly terrified because of Islam. They cannot even celebrate a festival in Europe now. Look what happened to France. You speak against Islam, they accuse you of phobia. But all European countries now, they are in a terror alert every day, not only now. If you go anywhere in Europe, they start putting those steel coming from the ground to block roads. Why? Because Muslims, they drive their cars and they kill as many when they have festival. But who is, Allah, who is the one who, Allah, who is the one encouraged them to come? It is the same stupid European. Any ship come from the sea, any refugee, take him, take him, take him. And now you get what you got, you deserve it. To weave a singer, he made a video against the Christian in, in the army yesterday. He was <laughs> Just forget about this dummy. Uh, what do you think about Musab uh, Suhaib Hassan? Well, he's a good man. He's not against Israel. He supports Israel, actually. This guy, he, uh, he helped Israel a lot to avoid terrorist activities. He is a son of Hamas founder, or the Hamas, let us say, the new founder. And he helped the Israeli army. How he can be against Israel? You know, why if somebody speak against action, Israeli done, he is suddenly, he is against Israel. This guy, he helped them thousands of times, leaking information about attack. Hey, hello. They are going to put a bomb in the bus there. Do something. 
Suddenly this guy now is against Israel. Where do you get your information from? From uh, what's his name? Walid Shubat? Walid Shubat, he, uh, the way I see it, he got jealous. He was the only one claiming to be the ex-terrorist. And he become a Christian. Now, there's a new guy and he is way more powerful. The son of Hamas founder. He became a Christian. So jealousy. So he started accusing him he's against uh, Israel. And it's not true. That is not true. Don't take jealousy. Uh, yeah, we have uh, uh, Ed, he's saying. Yeah, actually, I did join the USA Army in the time of war with Iraq. You are right. Uh, this is what Ed is saying. He was in the Marines. He said, I served the first Gulf War in Iraq. I'm sure you served in my uh, era. And I can tell you without a doubt that Muhammad then begged us Marine for water. I've been told the story by uh, an, uh, a person who served in Afghanistan. But this person, he speak uh, the Bashtu language. So they were in their truck. And a woman, she followed them in the truck, begging for food. And they were eating their sandwiches, their lunch. So the guy, he's a Christian. He asked the guy to stop. He gave her his sandwich. She took the sandwich and she was cursing him in her language. May Allah kill you. He just gave her a sandwich. She didn't know that he speak the language. In Iraq, more than 70, 80 mullahs, including the one I debated with. Do you remember this guy, Al Husseini? Do you remember him, the head of the Shia in, in Detroit? Hisham Al Husseini? He was one of the mullahs who went. They made an assembly begging George Bush to free them from Saddam Hussein. And they made a team to recruit Shia from Detroit to join the USA Army. And they made their speeches about it, that this is a holy command. Why? Because this will make their country, <laughs> in the long run, will take Saddam Hussein. The Sunni are not in charge no more. The Shia are majority. And this is exactly what happened. So they sponsor the war in Iraq. They fooled George Bush to go. And then when the American finished the job, the Shia said, get out. Now we want the country. So they were kissing the ass of the American to go. And now we don't need you. That's what they do. And simply, George Bush, he gave Iraq to the Shia, to Iran. However, if you ask me, I say that was a good thing. Why? You know, you might say, well, the Shia, they hate Israel, etc. I mean, all of them, they hate Israel anyway. Everybody in this territory hate Israel. But by giving Iran the power in Iraq, Saudi Arabia, is not in the relaxing mood no more. The Iranian army can invade all this territory in less than two hours. If you ask yourself, if Iran decide to attack Qatar or Emirat or Bahrain, how long is going to take to control those countries? I assure you, not even 20 minutes. Not even. When Saddam Hussein attacked Kuwait, Took him not even the morning time. That's it. Those are very small, tiny countries. Don't even have an army. 
even though like Emirat trying to buy F-16, etc., but this will not work. They don't have the population, they don't have the size, they don't have the, the ability, they don't have the skills, they don't have anything. The Muslim Sunni now are not really worried about Israel. Actually, they don't care for Israel. What they are worried about is Iran. And that is the good thing about the war in the Gulf. Otherwise, everything about it is ugly. War in general is ugly. Nothing good in war. So if you go right now and you check the map, this is Iran. And this is the Gulf. It's just a throw of a rock. And the Iranian, they will be there. And not only that, now Iran is controlling the biggest size of Yemen. Which means, if a war happened with those countries, the Yemeni, which is the Iranian Yemeni, they can close this entrance for the Red Sea. Which mean the you know the 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 uh, uh, tunnel which is goes to the Mediterranean, all the ship will be blocked, including oil. This is controlled now by Iran. Saudi Arabia they launch a war against the Iranian proxy, Al Houthi, and they lost massively. They are no match even to fight a militant. This is how weak Saudi Arabia is. Same as Emirat. Emirat joined force with them. With all their oil force, they could not even win one meter inside. Finally, they decide to go in agreement with Iran, like Al Houthi, for you know cease of fire because the Saudi they are exhausted. They spend a lot of money and they lost a lot of men. So now we have the Iranian. Maybe we need to draw something here so you guys can understand with me what we are talking about. Uh, so if we go back here make the map bigger Iran have a huge militant, militant force with the borders of Afghanistan Shia Iran have a huge existence of Shia in Syria. Even they brought Shia from Afghanistan. We can say all this area is controlled by Shia. Iraq, all of it now controlled by the Shia, except the area controlled by the Kurdish. So we can say all of this is Shia controlled. Yemen, most of it is controlled by the Shia. Oman, they are kind of Shia. Abadiya is kind of close to the Shia, and they are very friend to Iran, so they are not a part of any business. So as you see, the Sunni countries, they feel the risk that the Shia are surrounding them from everywhere. Muslim Brotherhood, sponsored by Iran, so when the Muslim Brotherhood, they occupy, they, they took uh, over Egypt a few years ago, that was a victory for Iran. But then Saudi Arabia jump, and they discovered that the Muslim Brotherhood, with the help of the Iranian, they are going to take over and make a coup against the kingdom royal family in Saudi Arabia. So they start arresting them in all those countries. In Qatar, Saudi Arabia, if you go right now, you search, you will find that Muslim Brotherhood, including Hamas, are considered a terrorist organization by Emirat, Bahrain, and Saudi Arabia. So the reason now, Emirat want to sign a peace agreement with Israel because they need their support. Iran is so close is there. It's just a few meters away. In fact, the Iranian already, they occupied the island of Abu Musa from Emirat. 
there's an island here. Let us zoom in it. Just to show you how close Iran is. Do you see how close it is? And Iran already occupying an island belong to Emirat. Already. So it's just maybe 20 minutes by fast boats. They are in they can land on Emirat. Kuwait is not even there's not they do not need to cross anywhere. I mean they are all is almost there too. Same as Bahrain. This is why Saudi Arabia, they build a bridge between Saudi Arabia and Bahrain because the Shia number in Bahrain is increasing extremely fast. Shia, they have more babies than Muslim Sunni because they practice more muta. So they build a bridge. This bridge, you can see it with Google. The whole point of it is to give uh, Bahrain more security and more supply of a human uh, resource same time give it the protection extra protection Bahrain they even import from Pakistan Muslim Sunni to work in the army because they want to adjust the number of the Shia the Shia is the major population so they bring a person from Pakistan who they are skilled with arm and weapon or serving in the army or pilot. You serve in the Bahrain army for five or six years or 10 years contract. After that, they give you citizenship because they want to increase the number of Sunni. All right. So the Middle East is messed up and the fear, all those Muslims uh, countries, the Muslim Sunni, they are in fear of Iran. Iran is going to eat them alive. This is why the Muslim Sunni, they are praying day and night that a war will happen between Iran and Israel. So they can sit and watch. For me, I don't want the war to happen between Iran and Israel. I would like to see it happening between the two evil source, Sunni versus Shia. You know, those countries like Dubai. If one missile failed from Iran, Dubai will be empty. The business will collapse. Anytime now they start speaking about war, everybody in those territory will leave and the country will collapse. Those economy are made from cartoon. They are not real. Dubai does not have a real economy. Same as Qatar. Because all their money as Qatar coming from gas and oil. So if the war started, all the oil supply from those countries will stop. Their economy will collapse. If you remember during the war with Iraq, between Iran and Iraq, the Iranian at that time, they were very weak compared to now. They put a lot of bombs in the water. So any ship is going in the water, hit them, and boom, the oil ship destroyed. So the oil supply from the Gulf during that time for almost nine years was really in trouble. And now all those countries, Saudi Arabia, Emirat, Bahrain, everybody, they are lining in the line to sign agreement with Israel because the agreement will not be only about let us have no normal normalization of uh, relationship. No, it's going to be an agreement of military and support. The same they did with Emirat. The same they did with Bahrain. The Israeli will provide intelligence support and high-tech support. And now for sure, as you know always, there is agreement which is not to be published. Secret agreement. And those agreement is against Iran. As they say, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So Emirat, Bahrain, Qatar, Qatar now is protected because they play the hyena. You know, they have the, uh, the they have the biggest base of the American. 
and they are friend to the Iranian. They are friend with Al-Qaeda. They are friend with everybody. Hyena. Same time, they are Muslim Brotherhood. But this is why Saudi Arabia, not long time ago, before Trump, he leave, they put sanctions on Qatar because they support Muslim Brotherhood and they support Hamas. But we have a stupid president at that time. His name is Trump. This potato Trump, because he worshiped money and because Qatar, they bribe his, his, his son-in-law, who was going to be, go bankrupt. They rent his building for $1 billion. He forced the Saudi and Emirati to lift the sanctions from Qatar. In fact, even the last week of Trump, the last week, he made a threat to Saudi Arabia. You should release, open the border now. And they did. Trump is not what we think. Trump is very corrupt like Biden. Trump is the same person who went in the front of the White House saying, Qatar should stop supporting terrorism now. It looked like it, he did it, so they can call him, says, what is your price? Two weeks later, they rented the building from his son-in-law. Since then, Qatar is our friend. And he supports Qatar wherever he go. But if you say those things, many people, they get upset because they are, you know, they, they think Trump is the, like, he's a good man. He's the same. He is the one who left the sanctions on a country sponsored killing Christians and Jews. Trump did it, not Biden. If you don't believe me, go check it out. You will see the video on YouTube, Trump saying Qatar should stop support terrorism. Less than 10 days after, Trump is selling 35 airplanes to Qatar. How they are supporting terrorism? And then 10 days after, you are selling them weapon, expensive one, high technology. Corrupt. False leaders. But you know, the, the, the crowd, you know, goat. Nobody think, nobody ask himself, nobody, you know, goat. For me, I have no choice but to vote for Trump even again. Why? Because what? I accept Biden. At least he's better than Biden. But not because he's a good guy. Anyone is not liberal, liberal is for me is way better than a liberal. As simple as that. But not. I'm not voting for Trump because I like him. Yeah, exactly the same as Kuwait. But then after the just yesterday we saw a video from from the Sheikh in Kuwait, and I was I find it very strange that the American are not pursuing to arrest this man who is making a threat against the American and against uh, the the Israeli. He's in Kuwait, a big Sheikh in Kuwait. His name is Uthman al Khamith, al Khabith. I call him not al Khamis. This guy, he's a Muslim Brotherhood too. Every day he made a video. And all of them support terrorism. And he is in Kuwait. Very filthy creature. The American embassy, they can ask immediately for his arrest. And Kuwait will not dare to say no. But because we have a fake president and fake government, liberals, you know, what you expect? What you expect from people do not know their gender. Do you expect intelligence? Logic? No. Do you support Ron DeSantis? Absolutely. This guy is a really good guy. Look, look what happened. President Biden, he did not do anything to remove American who need to travel out of Israel. DeSantis, who is not the president, he's not. He's just a governor of Florida, right? He made an order that to provide airplanes 
to remove any person who is from Florida from Israel. He is doing the job of a president. DeSantis is way better than Trump, and you know you cannot compare. This guy he changed all the books in schools, teaching kids about how to be homosexual, how to change your gender. He forbid the show of a transgender. He fought Walt Disney just because of that. He launched war in the woke, filthy culture. Not Trump. Trump, he have gays assistants. If you don't believe me, go search it right now. This is way better. This, this guy is the conservative Christian, not Trump. Trump is for sale. He's a businessman. Who pay more? Trump, he even praised Taliban. He says stupid things. He said, who can, who can conquer the Taliban? Who can win with Taliban? You stupid, isn't it your army? 2,000 Marine only, they control the whole country for 20 years. He called them warrior. He called them smart. He called them, no, cannot win against them. This is Trump, not Biden. Same, same, same he said about uh, Hezbollah. His donkey. So, but if you say that, you know, those who support Trump will be upset. But I don't care. I mean, I say things as it is. I make fun of myself when I do something wrong. Right? Uh, Trump is a Republican candidate. No problem, my friend. Who said to you Republican are really conservative? 90% of them, they are not really. You see, those who they are in politics, they go with the mood. So if the majority of population support homosexuality, everybody will support it. Because this is what the point, you want to win the election, right? Those, they don't care for ethic. They care for how to win the election. And same with Trump. Trump, he noticed that the one who they are voting for him, they are going to be the Christian, not the, the, the liberals. So he started giving them ideas that he is a conservative person. But in reality, this guy is a womanizer. He's people around, he cheat. He's a playboy. He has nothing to do with conservative. He's not. All of us, we knew this. The guy, he paid $800 tax, Trump. Trump, with all the money and the palaces he have. The whole year tax is $800. Where is the ethic? It's not $800,000. I mean, even $800,000 should be nothing. This is nothing. There is no way. It, uh, it's $800. When I pay my tax, they take my heart with it. I pay way more than Trump. Why? All those who you praise them, they are scumbags. What is my take on abortion? I don't know. Ask a chicken. Have you seen a chicken killing her baby? You don't see that. Even chicken are, have a brain better than a human being. <laughs> I never saw a chicken killing her baby. Did you? So if a chicken cannot do it, why a human being want to do that? Why even I need to take need to take a take on the abortion? Is it a human? Is it a human behavior to kill babies? You know, those liberals, they are really, really weird. They keep talking about the human right and blah, blah, blah. And then they kill babies. Oh, it's my buddy. This is not your buddy. This is the body of a child. This is not, he, he have a soul. This is not your buddy. Since when is your buddy? But we are in a time where even abortion, we should talk about it. Should we do it or not do it? Like we are killing your kids. Why in the world would I do such a thing? 
The Muslim will be grateful for you. They do not need to send Mujahideen. You do it. How many thousand babies are killed in USA every year because of abortion? A million? Two million? And this is what DeSantis, he did. He's against it too. And then the Supreme Court against it too. Trump is a self-worshipper person, the guy he think he is like coming from the sky. Still, if the election come and he is the only one opposing like in the in the in the table, you know, for election, I have no choice but to vote for Trump. But as I said, it's not because he is the best, but because he is the best between the wars. Anyway, I think uh, we have enough for today. It's already 5 a.m. here. It's time for me to have some coffee. Who want to drink coffee with me? Anyone? Who want to drink heavy duty Greek coffee? With cardamom. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and uh, you know, and and this is the funny thing about China. You remember, for the last few years, every scumbag in the West and the East speak about Muslim being discriminated and killed in China. Suddenly, nobody talk about it now. Why? Because simply, it was an agenda. It's just an agenda. They want to stop China. They are being unfair to China. I'm not defending China, by the way. But they frame a person, the same as they frame Trump to be a racist against black people. The guy is not. But they frame him. He's against Asian. He hates Asian too. He hates black people too. He hates Hispanic. He is a KKK. So they frame you. The same as the Muslim, they frame me too. They try to make my reputation bad. The same way Western, they start attacking China because China is getting massive, strong, powerful. And they do not know what to do with China. So how we can stop China? Ah, the Muslims. Suddenly, even Trump, he like, he defend the, the, the Muslim in China. France, Germany, everybody is in love with the Muslims in China. What happened now? Nobody talking about it. What, that Muslims are now having better life in China? How come you don't talk about the Christian in China? The Chinese, the day I arrived to China, they destroyed the biggest church in China, the biggest. They, they make it into dust. And the excuse is built illegally. Nobody talk about the Christians. So when they pick up on the Muslim, says we are defending the right of Muslim because now they are more legitimate. See, they are not defending the Christians. So the liberals will not be upset because you cannot be a liberal president and defend the Christian. Shame, you're going to do that. Let the Christian die. We hate them. Let us defend the Muslims. We love the Muslims. So liberals, they line up fighting against China and all is a false excuse. China, they put in jail only terrorists. When I went to the uh, uh, Forbidden City, I don't know if any one of you been there, there is, uh, they put like the big concrete steel column in the, in the walkway. And there is the front of me, there is uh, Chinese people. I said, oh, you speak English? He said, yes. And I was surprised actually that those Chinese, they were really tall, you know. My idea always Chinese people are short. So I told him why all those things they are annoying for people who they are lining up to get in. He said because of terrorists. So what they do as usual, Muslim terrorists they drive their van, van over this this area because this is where tourists come, and they drove over everybody. Muslim they carry sword and they attack police stations. They cut their head. They cut. The, they kill farmers. So. If they jail them, the Chinese government are ugly, disgusting. But the American, they bring in terrorists and putting them in Guatemala Bay, it's okay. Bombing them is okay. But China cannot do that. Right? 
hypocrisy and people believe you know people listen uh, to tv and they believe it and they are the chinese you know the chinese is a communist they are like you liberals they are communist aren't you aren't you the liberals are you communist the chinese support abortion a woman she can have only one baby and they take her womb they take the womb out so she will not have more babies now the stupid Chinese government, the communists, like those liberals, they find out that this is a big mistake. So now they are begging women to have babies, but nobody want to have babies no more because generation used to have only one baby. Just one. Nobody want to have babies in China now. This is why India now become the biggest population country in the world. That is impossible. China was, and China always should be, the biggest population in the world. But because of the communist liberals and their stupid mentality, they killed their own population. And now China is a massive country. But if they go in war, they cannot handle it. Why? They don't have babies. They are at risk of not existence now. Every family have only one baby. And do you know what does that mean? That means when the parents die, the population will drop two-thirds. Because everyone have one baby. Two people die, one is alive. The tree is gone. Now we have one. Now the one to have a baby, to have sorry, to have a baby himself, he have to get married. And look what happened, because now. They force children, force people to have only one child. Most of the Chinese, they choose to have a male baby. They give them the chance to choose the egg. You want male or female? The majority, they choose to have male. So now they are short of women, which means even if they try to have children, they cannot because they don't have equal number of women. This is what happened when you follow the stupid liberals. Liberals are stupid, and they are so stubborn, they think they are the smartest. So now China built a kingdom of wealth, manufacture, but they lost their population. If they go in war right now, the biggest risk is population. Japan is suffering from the same thing. Korea is suffering from the same thing. People, they walk in the street, and they have puppies in the baby court, not babies. I used to think Trump is a second Jesus. Are you insulting Jesus now? Crazy people. This is, you know, this is why liberalism, liberalism, is a, is a is an extreme danger for any society. You know, when I was doing my master degree, and you know those the liberals, you cannot, uh, you know, they will accuse you of anything you hate. Uh, so I, 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 I proved to them by economy that having a society of homosexual will destroy the society. Money, business only, just money, not not ethic. How? You today, if you are young in age, 30 years from now, maybe 40, you will be retired. So today they take tax from you. And your tax will be saved. Some will be used. Some will be saved for you when you're retired. It's called Social Security. So if the society turn into homosexual, the one who pay today for retirement of somebody is someone born maybe 20 years ago. And the one who collect that is somebody born 65, 67 years ago. But if we have a society of homosexual, in 40 years from now, who is going to pay for my social security if there's no young ones, no more?
Do you understand? In order to get your social security retirement, after 40 years from now, you need a newborn women and men to be growing and become a workforce, pay tax, and from their tax, they will give you social security. Not your tax, your tax is already spended. So if the whole society became homosexual, nobody will pay tax for your social security. And the generation will die. The society will die. You will not have enough people to protect the country. You will not have enough manpower to keep running the country. You will not have enough manpower to keep supply. The nation will die. So all ideas, liberals, they come with is self-destruction. This is even if you don't believe in God or anything. It doesn't say you are just a person who believe in money and business. Homosexuality is the way of self-destruction. Women sleep with women, men sleep with men. There's no babies. And the funny is, when they want to have a baby, they go adopt somebody. That means still you need us. Uh, this is why we as a Christian we should stand and say the truth and share uh, the, the, what makes sense with people and don't compromise those who compromise they are not Christians you know there's many Christians they are just potatoes like I remember once I was doing a seminar so the guy, he went to like corner me. So he stood up. He says, I heard that you speak against homosexuality. Look like you hate them. You know? So I did not say anything. I said, are you homosexual? The guy, he said, I told you, why you are saying that? I said, look like you are the one who hate them, not me. <laughs> look what happened to you. I just asked you, are, are you a homosexual? Why do you get so upset? Supposedly, he is a questioning me. He want to get me busted. I heard, and he was shaking his head, like, you know, and, you know and moving his hand in a funny way. Yeah. I heard, you know, and, you know, you are talking to Christian Prince. I will get you busted in two seconds. You have no idea you're talking to who. If you are little, if you have, uh, if you have intelligence, I have the intelligence. People, they start dying talking at him. It turned to be he's the one who have a phobia. So, you know, like in debate, in argument, you have to have knowledge, you have to have wisdom, and you have to have the gift, a gift given to you from God. But if you are a Christian and you want to argue and debate, educate yourself first. Don't be a big mouth, open your mouth, and you lose an argument. That is not right. So educate yourself about everything around you, not only about the Bible. Those people don't believe in the Bible. If you if you try to show them from the Bible, that's not, not the right thing to do. You have to show them with the proofs and evidence which they understand and they accept for their own way of life. Uh, what do you do if you have a good you have Muslim best friend this young guy came to from good family has not into religion stuff should I pray and let him let the time tell yeah you see Steve the issue is You know, I grew up in the Middle East, right? And, you know, I have, like, kids in my age at that time. And uh, they are nice. But the second they knew about the religion, they change. As long as we are kids, 
honest, we don't have anything to do with religion. My parents never taught me to hate Muslims, never taught me to be aggressive against them. The second those kids, they learn about the religion, they changed. So your friend, he might be a nice person now, but one day he might learn about his religion that he cannot be nice to you. <laughs> so you cannot trust them, my friend. Do you understand? Same time, how you know even if he is decent with you or not? A Muslim is not allowed to be nice and friendly to non-Muslims. Unless he take it as a security. Speaking to them in a friendly way, while your heart is like this, I'm just quoting their book. I'm just quoting their book, not mine. So, are you going to risk having a relationship with someone he might just play in with you? Or maybe tomorrow he will go to the mosque and they will tell him to do jihad? His book is the book of the devil. He's nice or not doesn't make any difference for me. I don't judge Muslims by because their name is Muhammad. I judge Muslims by following the teaching of Muhammad, which is evil. Otherwise, I have no problem with anyone. His name is Muhammad Ahmad. Who care? All right. It's time to make coffee. I might come back if the if the if the uh, the operation you know the surgical operation started against Hamas because I will be really happy to see that. I'm excited to see the result soon. I hope, and uh, I promise you, I will have a party. The day Hamas will be demolished, big party. I will invite you all to eat falafel online. <laughs> Thank God you are not with me here. <laughs> Otherwise, I will go bankrupt. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, coffee time, coffee time. Hamas need to go, Allah need to go. The root of all evil is Islam. You know, people, they keep talking about Hamas, but the truth is, it is Islam. Did you ask yourself why all those Muslims are so excited for what Hamas did? Because they are Muslims. Islam is the problem. It's not Hamas. Hamas is a group of Muslims following the teaching of the faith in Muhammad. But nobody want to say why they did what they did because they are following the filthy teaching of muhammad why they were shouting allah akbar when they are killing people because they are following the filthy scumbag muhammad why they burn people Allah? because they following the scumbag muhammad why they hate the jews because they follow the command of muhammad to kill the jews nobody want to say the truth everybody is speaking about hamas did what hamas did but nobody want to say this is what islam did even the Jewish leader don't say why Hamas is doing this. In fact, many of them, they say, not all uh, Muslims Muslim don't believe in this. Muslim don't. They don't. Since when? Since when? Even after they killed your babies, still you are politically correct? Even after they rape you? Here, no place for being politically correct. This is why YouTube don't allow us to have support chat or any support or anything. No commercial. Every scumbag in the world, he can get commercial. Because they will not let you get supported. You are not politically correct. And people learn. If you want to be successful in their measurement of success, you have to be politically correct. Well, my, for me, my success have nothing to do with your money. My success is to be saying the truth, not making money from YouTube. My success is to go to bed and I sleep comfortable, for I say the truth, not lying to people and fooling them. That is my success. Otherwise, 
as the, as the Lord, he says, what is the benefit if you win the whole world and you lose yourself? So in the world today, they want you to lose yourself so you can, you know, you win the world by losing yourself. You go to hell. You have to adopt the lying business. Everybody, you lie to everybody. 90% of those who they are in politics, if not 99, they knew Islam is evil. Many of them, they oppose homosexuality. Many of them, they oppose uh, abortion. Many of them, they oppose many things, but they themselves, they vote for it. Why? Because they are perfectly correct. As simple as that. They don't dare to point their opinion with honesty because they knew that they are there to gain, not to lose. And their gain is to gain today positions, work, money, to lose is to lose those. For us as a Christian is to gain the truth. We are not losing. They are the losers. And their babies, they are paying the price. Their babies are confused about their gender. Their babies having 20, 50 rings in their ears and their nose, they don't know what to do with the ear. I mean, they are number one problem in the security of the airport. They have rings everywhere, their belly button, their vagina, their penis, their toes, their nose, their tongue. Confuse people. Their babies is the one who commits suicide, not the Christian kids. Because they lose their comfort, they lose their security, they lose their confidence, and they don't know what they are. And this is why there's a huge number of people committing suicide from those kind of people. Who is the one going to take a drugs? A Christian believer? No. There's no Christian. There's no way you can be Christian and you can take a drugs or sell drugs. Who is the one who will do porn business? You can't be a Christian and you're doing porn. Bring women to work for you like Andrew Tits or human trafficking. Christianity is not only a faith it's a solution for all kind of things we have in our life. Why people, they face problems in their families? Because when they get married, the Lord was not in the marriage. And because of that, divorce will happen. And then, even when they get married, their marriage was not real. It was just a partnership. The Lord is not there in marriage. So for us, the teaching of the Lord is a solution, is a constitution, is a doctor, is a healer, is a medicine, is a converter. And the most important thing will clean your mind from confusion. A believer have a comfort nobody can explain. A disbeliever is always paranoid, upset, unhappy, demonic. So I encourage you to teach your children so they can learn the gospel for their, this is their support when they are youth, when they are adult. Otherwise, they will be the same as those poor Children who grow in New York, Chicago, they put rings in their faces, tattoo everywhere. You cannot even see their face. Go to Philadelphia. Did you see Philadelphia? This is this is the atheist city. People walking like zombies. You know what zombies mean? I'm not joking. This is the fruits of atheism and liberalism. scary when I say scary I'm not exaggerating if I search right now in Google just Philadelphia uh, what do you see you expect the name to say something like nice okay, I just type Philadelphia what is this what is that what's happening is that a zombie town we see in the movie? It is.
This is not a fiction movie. You can go there. They destroy generations. They kill them. Look at them. This is not, this is, and you will not see Joe Biden speaking about this. He will not go there. You will not see even a Christian congressman saying, what's going on there? Nobody care. Why this is happening? How even the drugs is coming there like rain? The whole, the whole city is a zombie city. What they will show you, they will show you an actor, she is wearing a bikini, and she is going to Hawaii with her boyfriend. This is their news. This is what is important. An actor, she is asking for divorce. Tom Cruise, he want to sell his villa. You notice that all of them, they are bending over like Muslims, praying to Allah. Look at the faces. This is a city. Well, thanks to the drugs and liberals. And if you ask them, atheism, liberalism is the best way to live. Sex and drugs. And then sleep in the street and be homeless. So show your children what the drugs can do to them. Don't wait until they say, oh, they are so young now. They don't know. No, show them. Show them. Let them get scared. Scare the hell of them from the result. Smoking, drinking, drugs is not your friend. Anyway, I might be back in a few hours to see what is the update in uh, in Israel. And uh, how many hours, guys, you want me to be away? Let us see. Let me call Netanyahu and ask him, hey, when the, when, when the attack will happen, man? Why you don't give us the exact hour? Don't worry, I'm not going to tell uh, uh, Hamas. I will call only Obama. <laughs> their friend Obama or this rabbi <laughs> look at this guy what a potato all right guys I will be back soon later maybe today depend in the the if the if the invasion start to get those dogs and uh, let us see who let the dogs out and that's what we do here so I hope soon a few hours from now maybe I will come back now for me time to make coffee it's morning until I see you again may the Lord bless you and I hope people in Asia today were able to hear me and have some time with us live because we came in a time which is perfect for their time. Thank you.